During high temperature sterilization, the most critical factor ensuring destruction of heat resistant spores is A. Pressure inside the chamber. B. Saturated steam contact with all surfaces. C. Duration of vacuum cycles. D. Air removal during drying phase. Answer B. The key to high temperature sterilization is direct contact of saturated steam with all instrument surfaces. Pressure aids steam penetration, but sterilization efficacy depends on heat transfer from steam. Why is superheated steam considered ineffective for sterilization? A. It contains too much pressure. B. It increases spore survival rates. C. It accelerates drying too quickly. D. It transfers heat poorly to surfaces. Answer. D. Superheated steam acts like dry heat, which transfers heat less effectively than saturated steam. Effective sterilization requires steam that can condense and release latent heat. The Bowie Dick test is specifically designed to monitor A. Sterilization temperature accuracy. B. Steam penetration and air removal. C. Chamber drain function. D. Drying cycle integrity. Answer B. The Bowie Dick test detects inadequate air removal and steam penetration in pre vacuum steam sterilizers, ensuring uniform sterile and exposure. What is the minimum recommended exposure time at 132 degrees Celsius 270 degrees Fahrenheit for wrapped instruments in a pre vacuum cycle? A. 2 minutes. B. 3 minutes. C. 4 minutes. D. 10 minutes. Answer, C. According to standards, wrapped instruments in pre-vacuum steam sterilizers require at least 4 minutes exposure at 132 degrees Celsius to achieve sterility assurance. Which part of the sterilizer must be checked daily for obstruction to avoid sterilization failures? A. Chamber drain line. B. Steam pressure gauge. C. Chamber walls. D. Temperature probe. Answer A. The chamber drain is crucial for removing air and moisture. Any blockage prevents steam contact with items, causing sterilization failure. Why is a pre vacuum sterilizer more efficient than a gravity displacement sterilizer? A. It operates at lower temperature. B. It eliminates the need for drying. C. It removes air actively before steam entry. D. It allows longer exposure times. Answer. C. Pre-vacuum sterilizers actively evacuate air, enabling faster and more reliable steam penetration compared to passive gravity displacement. The correct biological indicator for high-temperature steam sterilization is A. Bacillus subtilis B. Bacillus stereothermophilus. C. Clostridium sporogenes. D. Escherichia coli. Answer B. Geobacillus, bacillus, stereothermophilus spores are used as biological indicators because of their resistance to moist heat, validating steam sterilization. What problem occurs if steam quality contains excessive moisture, wet steam? A. Reduced chamber pressure. B. Wet packs after sterilization. C. Increased spore kill rate. D. Lower energy efficiency. Answer B. Wet steam condenses excessively, leaving packs wet and compromising sterility due to wicking of microorganisms post cycle. Which sterilizer cycle relies solely on steam gravity displacement without vacuum assistance? A. Flash cycle. B. Pulsed vacuum cycle. C. Pre vacuum cycle. D. Gravity cycle. Answer D. Gravity cycles use steam entering from the top to displace air downward and out of the chamber drain. What is the primary purpose of the drying phase in a steam sterilization cycle? A. Kill resistant spores. B. 
prevent recontamination. C. Improve cycle time. D. Reduce condensation in chamber. Answer, B. Proper drying ensures packages remain dry, preventing wicking of microorganisms and maintaining sterility. If a wrapped load comes out wet after sterilization, the first corrective action is to A. Recall all loads processed that day. B. Repeat biological monitoring immediately. C. Check for chamber drain function or steam quality issues. D. Rerun the load without drying phase. Answer, C. Wet packs are often caused by poor steam quality or blocked drains. These must be corrected before load release decisions. Why are air leaks particularly dangerous in pre-vacuum sterilizers? A. They prevent temperature from rising. B. They allow unsterilized air pockets inside loads. C. They speed up drying but reduce efficiency. D. They damage biological indicators. Answer, B. Air leaks allow unsterile air to enter the chamber, preventing steam penetration into packs and creating cold spots. What is the sterilization parameter F0 used to measure? A. Amount of steam pressure. B. Equivalent lethality of a sterilization process. C. Moisture content in chamber. D. Speed of drying cycle. Answer, B. F0 represents the equivalent time in minutes at 121 degrees Celsius required to kill microorganisms. It is used to evaluate sterilization effectiveness. Which cycle is commonly used for unwrapped surgical instruments needed urgently? A. Pre-vacuum 4-minute cycle. B. Gravity 15-minute cycle. C. Immediate use steam sterilization, IUSS, cycle. D. Bowie Dick test cycle. Answer C. IUSS, formerly flash sterilization, is used for unwrapped items required immediately, though its use should be limited. What is the most common reason for sterilizer test pack failure? A. Incorrect temperature settings. B. Air entrapment inside the pack. C. Steam overpressure. D. Poor water quality. Answer, B. Test pack failures typically occur when air is not completely removed, preventing full steam penetration. A wrapped instrument set requires 30 minutes at 121 degrees Celsius in which type of sterilizer? A. Pre-vacuum. B. Gravity displacement. C. Immediate use. D. Flash cycle. Answer, B. Gravity displacement sterilizers require longer exposure, 30 minutes at 121 degrees Celsius, for wrapped sets due to slower steam penetration. Which of the following ensures proper steam sterilization monitoring? A. Only biological indicators weekly. B. Only mechanical gauges per cycle. C. Combination of biological, chemical, and mechanical monitors. D. Bowie Dick Test Monthly. Answer, C. All three, mechanical, chemical, and biological, monitoring methods are needed to validate sterilizer performance and sterility assurance. What is the maximum acceptable drying time in a steam sterilizer for textile packs? A. 15 minutes. B. 30 minutes. C. 45 minutes. D. 60 minutes. Answer, B. Drying textile packs longer than 30 minutes increases risk of recontamination and inefficiency. Standards limit it to 30 minutes. Why should steam pressure not exceed the recommended limit? A. It weakens instrument metals. B. It creates superheated steam that reduces sterilization efficiency. C. It shortens exposure times excessively. D. It causes rapid drying before sterilization completes. Answer, B. 
Excess pressure produces superheated steam, which reduces condensation and heat transfer, lowering sterilization effectiveness. What is the minimum standard cycle for porous loads in a pre-vacuum steam sterilizer? A. 121 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. B. 128 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. C. 134 degrees Celsius for 18 minutes. D. 132 degrees Celsius for 4 minutes. Answer. D. Porous loads, such as textiles, require at least 4 minutes at 132 degrees Celsius in a pre-vacuum cycle for sterilization. What is the primary role of the chamber jacket in a steam sterilizer? A. Generate steam pressure. B. Maintain chamber temperature uniformity. C. Shorten exposure times. D. Provide air evacuation. Answer. B. The chamber jacket keeps walls hot, preventing premature steam condensation and ensuring even sterilization temperatures. A chemical indicator that reacts only when exposed to all three critical parameters, time, temperature, and steam, is known as A. Class 2 B. Class 3 C. Class 5 integrator D. Class 1 process indicator Answer, C. Class 5 integrators respond to all critical sterilization parameters, offering high-level assurance of cycle success. Why are rigid sterilization containers preferred over wrapped sets for long-term storage? A. They provide better barrier protection against microbes. B. They prevent corrosion of instruments. C. They are lighter and cheaper. D. They reduce sterilization exposure time. Answer A. Rigid containers provide superior microbial barrier properties, protecting sterile integrity during long term storage. What is the correct placement for a biological indicator in a test pack? A. On top of the load. B. Near the chamber door. C. Deep inside the pack's densest area. D. Outside the sterilizer. Answer. C. Biological indicators must be placed in the most difficult area for steam penetration to challenge sterilizer effectiveness. If chemical indicators inside a wrapped set do not change color, the next step is to A. Release the load after visual check. B. Rerun the set through the sterilizer. C. Assume external indicator is sufficient. D. Send for microbiological testing only. Answer, B. A failed chemical indicator inside a pack means steam did not reach, the set must be re-sterilized. What cycle uses multiple pressure and vacuum pulses to remove air before steam admission? A. Gravity cycle. B. Bowie-Dick cycle. C. Pre-vacuum cycle. D. IUSS cycle. Answer, C. Pre-vacuum cycles employ repeated pressure and vacuum pulses to achieve complete air removal and effective sterilization. What happens if textile packs are loaded too tightly in a sterilizer? A. Shorter drying time. B. Restricted steam penetration. C. Higher chamber pressure. D. Overheated metal instruments. Answer. B. Tight packing prevents steam from circulating, leading to inadequate sterilization and failed indicators. Which of the following is the primary advantage of moist heat over dry heat sterilization? A. Lower temperature requirements with better spore destruction. B. Longer exposure time ensures deeper penetration. C. Easier to monitor with chemical strips. D. Less corrosion on metal instruments. Answer, A. Moist heat, steam, transfers energy more efficiently, requiring lower temperatures to achieve microbial kill compared to dry heat. A pre-vacuum sterilizer runs at 132 degrees Celsius, but biological indicators repeatedly fail. The most likely cause is A. 
faulty door gasket. B. Incorrect sterilant used. C. Air removal failure. D. Excess drying time. Answer, C. Even at correct temperature, retained air prevents steam penetration, leading to sterilization failures despite proper readings. The most critical monitoring practice before releasing a load for patient use is A. Checking chamber pressure charts. B. Verifying external indicators only. C. Reviewing all three mechanical, chemical, and biological monitoring results. D. Relying on operator experience. Answer, C. Release decisions should be based on complete monitoring, mechanical readings, chemical indicators, and biological test outcomes.